Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Luke, grade 11 teacher. For those of you who don't know me, welcome. This is... Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> grade 12 English teacher and grade 11. So, our debate resolution for the evening is... The traditional Chinese exam-based education system is the best type of education in the world. It helps create students who grow up to be successful and very driven. This system creates more elite academics than any other nation. On the other side. Canada has the best educational system in the world. It allows students to pursue their interests more freely, offers students less pressure to perform on exams, and creates creative, original, and critical thinkers. On the negative side, Team Canada, right over here, we have, as I introduce each one of you, please stand. We have Alex, Alice, Peter, Vicky, Bessie, and Smith. <laughs> On the affirmative side, on Team China, we have Andy. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Ivy. Bond. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Carmen. Good evening and welcome. Alvin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Paris. Um, good evening. Thanks for your work. Yeah, I know you will vote for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys definitely didn't get any extra points for the hello. <laughs> We're Canadians, we are polite, we don't need to talk all the time. <laughs> okay, so you should know the format that the debate is going to take tonight. It will take a argument, rebuttal, counter rebuttal format. We will have two arguments with rebuttals and counter rebuttals. Then we will have a quick five minute break, and then we will come back with our last argument, rebuttal, counter rebuttal. Respective judges, my fellow debaters and members from the opposite side, welcome to our debate. Tonight, we will be debating which country's educational system is better, China or Canada. And our team firmly believes that the Chinese educational system is far superior for a variety of convincing reasons. Before we begin discussing the specifics of our argument, we need to clarify something for the audience. Many of you may be wondering about what defines a good education system. Well, let me tell you. We believe a good education system is defined by the students that it produces. First and foremost, a good education system creates students who are honorable, respectful, and perform well in all aspects of schooling. Furthermore, Upon graduating from a superior educational system, students will become productive members of a society who are globally competitive in fast-paced society. Through schooling, these pupils have developed an excellent grasp of basic knowledge and the ability to withstand psychological pressures and a strong sense of self-worth and ability. Tonight, you will hear, argue, you will hear arguments from our Oxygen team suggesting that the Canadian education system also creates productive and competitive students. Perhaps they will argue that the Canadian students are more forward-thinking, critical, and creative. However, in reality, while this may be partially true, Canadian students ultimately lack focus and do not amount to product productive members of a society <laughs> who can be globally competitive around the world. So, in our opinion, it's obvious that the teaching methods are one of the most essential ways to create wonderful students, and therefore the environments for learning is Hi. not nearly as important as teachers who foster the growth and the development of the students. Okay, thank you. Hello. Honored judges, administrators, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be nominated to introduce our desirable statement. Canadian education system is much better than Chinese education. Education is the most important thing for a, a nation's sustainable development. It aims to cultivate the talents 
to hold this country. Whatever the form of the education is, training new students, giving them skills to find the proper place in the society is the final objective. Chinese education goes farther and farther from this way. Students in China are only evaluated by grades, which come from one test, Gao Kao, while they're taking thousands of other tests per day. In contrast, Canadian students' final grades come from, come from a vast number of activities. By, uh, by the way, Canadian students take tests, takes tests as well as these activities, but in a proper amount. Students that grow up in this kind of surrounding will definitely have a healthier lifestyle and a stronger mind. On the other hand, Chinese students work from 5 a.m. to at least 10 p.m. per day, which damages their bodies a lot. Uh, uh, it is reported that China has the highest re uh, rate of myopia students, reflecting the depression of the average health condition of Chinese students. Canadian students study in school for about six hours per day before university. Uh, their spare time can be spent on a free, full of fun childhood, which is far more meaningful than all the things you learn in school. Uh, because it will help you to think out of the box and explore the world. Finally, uh, Chi uh, Chinese universities are difficult to get in, but you can easily graduate as long as you uh, do not decide to fund an another Apple or Microsoft. The Canadian universities are where you should put all of your potential in because they are high standards, excellent facilities, and deserved reputations. Um, uh, Chinese, a Canadian education system is a clear choice. Thank you. our fourth point. I believe that the overall quality of students under the Chinese education program is better than those under the Canadian program. In the following two minutes, I will provide evidence to support this idea from several perspectives. First of all, when standard Canadian program teachers were asked the difference between Chinese and Canadian students, 100% of the teachers said that Chinese students are much more interested in their own studying and success in education. Furthermore, they pay more attention to and respect to their teachers by doing all the homework and assignments, on time and actively participating in classroom activities. These interviewers also complained that Chinese, that Canadian students lack discipline, so teachers are constantly spending time disrupting educational lessons to deal with behavior and discipline <laughs> issues. Secondly, since Chinese students focus more on studying, they do not have the spare energy spending bullying or cyberbullying others, which often happens in Canada. According to Canadian government anti-bullying website, in one school year in Canada, there are over 3.2 million students who are victims of bullying and one out of 10 students have to drop out of school because of bullying, <coughs> meaning that the education system have already lost the ability to teach their poor kids. Also, over two-thirds of students believe that schools respond poorly to bullying, which means schools have failed to provide an adequate learning environment for students. What's more, because of the excellent values that Chinese education system has em emphasized from an early age, Chinese students are taught not to define people as groups. When Chinese students grow up in a school environment, they don't have the same phenomenon as in Canada where students are constantly labeled. This labeling not only applies to the ethnic... Oh, uh, thing. Uh, there, uh, therefore, no matter how you consider the fact, the Canadian education system, which is full of these kind of activities, is not a good education system. That's all. Well, 
Thank you for your statement. Well, the argument you just uh, mentioned before, uh, it sounds reasonable, but uh, we think you are telling the untrue story. So in the next several minutes, I will tell you what is the truth. First, I want, first I want to talk about the bullying, because one week ago, one of my, one of my good friends, Gavin from 12B, is bullied in my school. So I really want to talk about this. <coughs> first, uh, the first land of the the first land of the Chinese education, China, is actually not safe as Canada, according to the ranking from Global Peace Index in 2000, 2000, 2013. Canada ranks the fourth safe, safest place in 158 countries and districts around all around the world. However, the ranking for China is only 89. And I know today we are talking about the schooling and education. So the safe, the food health security must be mentioned because all the students need to eat or drink in school. So for the report published by Economist Intelligence Unit, we can clearly see that Canada is one of the top 10 countries that have the safest food in the world, but China only gets the 42nd place. And I think the purpose for students to go into school is for study, but not be aware of the threat that may take their life away coming from the food or water in the school. Do you think so? And also, also, next part is the bullying. Uh, <coughs> here, I won't, I won't ask you a question. <coughs> Which country on this planet does not have bullying in their schools? The answer is obvious. No, no country. Just uh, let me finish. finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so at the very last, I want to ask uh, you guys three questions. If the Chinese education is really better than Canadian education, why do you study in the Canadian program? <laughs> why are we sitting here and debating this uncomfortable topic? Why will you want to study in Canadian university in the future? And please remember, study smart, not hard. Thank you, that's all. Good evening, my respectful judges. First of all, for the problem that our offset mentioned before about the food problem, one thing I need to say is China is a developing country. We only built our country for six, over 60 years. However, can, can Canada is a country that has over hundreds of years of of education and we are developing countries we don't have so much resources to spend on each on each student because our population is so huge however Canada only have a small number of students and <clears throat> and the school is also smaller than China does so this kind of this kind of thing indicate that we cannot do as well as Canadian side however our country is progressing day by day because uh, the ranking is already show that every year our China's education systems spend more uh, spend more and more total GDP of our country into the education and also with the increasing amount of money input our country's our country's condition will be better and better that is what I can guarantee to you and also um, personally I believe the bullying is took took place in every place in the world. However, Canadian school didn't protect the students' privacy. If a student is bisexual or homosexual in the in the school and know that the teachers, the teacher will say that to every student in the beginning of the first class. And that is that kind of protect the students, I say no. That's that's our point. Hello everyone. We think Canadian education system is better because Canadian courses are designed better, they are more diverse and the difficulty is suitable and they are still oriented. There are many activities in Canadian courses such as poster design, presentation using PowerPoint, creative writing and drama performance. 
And also, some special classes where students can fix barns, um, build barns and fix cars are included in Canadian education system. All these activities help to build students' ability of speaking, creating, and critical thinking. And these skills are what we will apply to the real world. We will need, they will not be forgotten and can be beneficial in our future. For example, a Canadian student will be able to prepare a meeting or give a speech better than a Chinese student. And what the most important skill is to is the ability to cooperate. In modern society, cooperation is needed in many areas. Most companies require their workers to work together and finish their work together. And all those skills we use to solve real situation problems are exactly what Canadian students do and practice in class. Another point to mention, in China, all high school students have to learn very difficult math. They are under much, much stress because of this, but uh, Canadian courses are different. They are not designed to be dif difficult. They are not designed to make students stressed out. Instead, they are designed to give an uh, introduction to students and help <coughs> them explore their own interests and strengths. A little pressure is good, but too much pressure is harmful. Statistics show that more than half of Chinese primary, middle, and high school students have too much pressure that lead to depression in the future. Generally speaking, Canadian education system fits students better and makes them ready to face the ever-changing world with various useful skills. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the uh, wonderful arguments for the uh, negative side. And uh, basically, uh, from what you said before, uh, we we can we can simply find that all of you said is about the teaching teaching techniques, no matter about activities, posters, or group work. And uh, the basically thing I would I would like to see is that uh, firstly, uh, if because of the teaching techniques, uh, Canadian students uh, we do not deny the fact that Canadian students are well grounded. So they are, they are more all around us. And however, if we are too well grounded, we may not have a class that we are really good at. And uh, there's a thing goes that better to learn a few things well rather than a lot of uh, things not well. And secondly, uh, is that teachers, mo for most of the time, Canadian teachers spend too much time on teaching techniques instead of teaching their students knowledge, especially for deep knowledge. And obviously, this is the main job for teachers. And uh, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, their teaching techniques uh, focus too much on how to make their <coughs> students feel good, uh, instead of teaching their students real knowledge, just like I said before. And therefore, getting into the society <coughs> would be a huge challenge for Canadian students. Because they think they can do things well, but the truth is that they cannot. And basically, this is our rebuttal. Thank you. Okay, firstly, um, you said it's better to be good in few things than to be, um, to be medium in many fields. But I have to mention, in high school, our job is to, is to find what we are interested in, and we will learn deeper in university. And next, you said um, Canadian teachers focus too much on teaching skills but not knowledge. Can I ask you a question? Do you still remember all the years and dates and names you learned in, in grade 6 and 7? I don't know. I think there may be just a few left. And you know what, when you're, when you're graduated from university or high school, you can find all those information on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so what is important? The thing is important is how we learn and how we do things. Like if you don't know how to use the internet, how can you search the internet? And um, 
the third you said, um, Canadian students think they are good and um, good to do everything, and they will have difficulty getting into the society. But you know what? Uh, in China, uh, all the all the students have to focus on Gokou because that's what what almost decides their destiny. But in Canada, we can fail one test, but we won't fail the, the whole year. So we will learn that fa uh, failure is not the end of the world. We, we will be tougher, and we will know how to face the difficulties. Thank you, that's all. Dear friend, it is true that opposite side has some reasonable points within our first argument, but next we will introduce our second point, which simply stated is that education in China is taken much more seriously. But to begin with, the Chinese government is more focused on the educational system by allocating more funds, it's, and it's because of this that China's literacy rate, illiteracy rate is the people who are above 15 and who can read and write, is 91.6% of its total population. And if we consider the Chinese population is a tremendous comparing to the population of Canada, and if we see, and we can see it's a large number of the money. And in addition, it's undeniable the Chinese students, teachers, and parents are pay more attention to helping each other in education no system, I mean helping each other in educational system. The Chinese parents are involved in education for the betterment for their, both their children and their children's teachers. The parents are engaged the children to behave, to work hard, and respect of their teachers. Furthermore, the teachers in China have the highest level of their respect, according to an international study comparing their statutes in two, over 21 countries. This is, and this is information that came from the BBC English channel. You can just check it online. <laughs> and obviously, the Chinese, uh, obviously the teacher in Canada is based more a delicate situation when dealing with the uh, const uh, constant pressure from the parents to let the children succeed and constant disrespect and ridicule from public. Those overreaching parents will not only contribute to the overconfidence in the Canadian students' attitudes, but also creates a lack of the respect for their teachers. So this is best evidence of the superiority of the Chinese educational system because in China, every student in China respects their teacher in every single day, and they believe the teacher is an important part in the national educational system. But obviously, also obviously, the Canadian educational system does not produce a student that respectful and a productive member of the society. Thank you. <coughs> I'm Vicky, and thank you for the after group provides such a challenging point. But I will say that that is not the whole story, and you are wrong in some point. First of all, the funds, yeah. But you can compare to the facility and the uh, infrastructure between the ca Canadian and the China. And we can find <coughs> out this has a close relationship of the government funds give. And you know what? Uh, the some students who study in Canadian educational system, who participate in sports, music, art, will get full scholarship. But comparably, it's hard for Chinese students to apply for some scholarship. And next one, you said that the parents are involved in teaching so much. But for most uh, parents in, uh, in China, they are over caring their child, because most of them only have one, children in fam one child in their family. And in this case, they will push their child to study for a long time, and even send them to some extracurricular classes. This will bring their child too much pressure, and some of them will feel uh, neg will contain some negative emotions on their study. And next one, you said the you mainly focus on the point that the uh, Chinese are very respecting their education, 
But I'm sure you all know that the knowledge is the power publishing the development of, of human society forward. But in hundreds of years ago, the great, uh, the great um, our scientist was burned to death due to this sticking on the some scientific theory. And I'm sure that the students who study in Canadian educational system will become more psychologically healthy because of the uh, less pressure and the ranking from their school. And another thing I want to claim that the students are not, the children are not born to memorize or study for a long period of time. They need time to rest and they need some extra curricular activities to relax themselves so that they can more focus on their study without the behaviors of sleepy or any distract. And that's my point. Thank you. Okay, it's me again. First of all, I want to say one thing that Wiki's point has nothing to do with our point, which is about respect the teachers. And all of you sit here are teachers, so you deserve our respect. So first of all, she talked about the facilities, and I was asked to say, who cares about the facilities? Educational system is made up by teachers. We care about teachers, which means you. We care about you because you produce our high quality education systems and help us to be progressed. And also, she mentioned about the scholarship about music and art students. First of all, China do have a scholarship and do have a special school for those students who enter, though the fee is kind of high. But also, this has nothing to do with our respect teachers. And then, she said the knowledge is power and scientific speed burn on fire because of the scientific and uh, are the teachers and are they be respect? <laughs> um, a little bit confused about that point. And also for the health or well, healthy problem, it's easy to tell that pressure is always be the accelerator of your success. If you do not have pressure, you will just end up as a loser. And <laughs> Last but not least, <laughs> so she said parents force their students to do so many things. I want, only want to say that parents is always think for their kids for all the time, and they always love you. For once, uh, well, Ivan did very bad in his middle term exam, and her mother going to punch him in the face. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> and, but after that, her, uh, his mother said, um, you will do good next time, and I still love you. That's the whole point. No matter how your parents push you, they will still love you, and they are thinking the best for you. Best for you. And they maybe push you for inter a program that didn't like, but that is for your prosperous future. That's all. Thank you. All right, now, I'm presenting our group's number two argument. Canadian education system is the best because we have extracurricular activities. Different from Chinese education system, in Canadian education, students are encouraged to participate in clubs to express their interest and increase their personal skill sets. And there are many different kinds of forms of extracurricular activities in our school, like Model United Nations and Maple Leaf Let's Talk Club, and etc. These activities are strongly de developed our social experience, teamwork spirit, and leadership. And um, it helps us become more comprehensive and, and able to deal with many varying situations when we step into our society. And the impeccable and flexible personality is easier to adapt with society. And the personality will only be formed when you are particip participating in the extracurricular activities. Here is an example for the result of no extracurricular activity. And according to the report from Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, in 2011, there were 6 million undergraduate students in China, and 5,700,000 of them were unemployed, which means the unemployment rate was around 10%, which means every 10 students, one cannot get a single job. They all have great scores. They are the university students. But why does no company want them? 
because they have high uh, they have high scores but low abilities. In Canadian high schools, students are having more time to do what they like rather than doing test papers. And uh, cultivating their interests is not only for great childhood, but also for the awareness of what, what ability they need and what kind of person they want to be. Thank you. I talked something about the pressure. Uh, firstly, I would like to mention the pressure is not the problem for our education system because you know the population of China is far more uh, larger than that in Canada. And secondly, uh, they said something about the free time. So what I want to ask you a question: What is the main job for students? Obviously, gain knowledge, right? So if they have more free time, it means that they spend less time on studying. Uh, and, uh, however, on contrast, uh, Chinese students spend a lot of time on studying, and uh, you know, just like I said before, this is the main job for students. And uh, uh, and the uh, study and the study is that uh, Chinese students just uh, learn so many things. For example, sociology and uh, something like that, which is useless. <laughs> why, why they learn this? They just, they just want to improve their grades. They just want to improve their mark and help them to get into university. And this is the main, this is the main point. You know? So uh, basically, I, I think what the, what the negative side uh, said is totally wrong. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So, I totally don't agree with you. Um, each activity matches with a specific academic area. Like for students who are going, who are going to take engineering and, and in the engineering faculty in the future, participating in such activity will help them to more concentrate on their uh, studying in a limited amount of time and thereby promote their studying efficiency. If a young student can only study in school, this, uh, this definitely will lose their interest on studies. If they are no interested anymore, why come to school? And the, uh, the school things are whole wa uh, are wasting your time. So don't come to school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, we have a five minute break. Uh, teens, you wanna make some notes and get ready for your last argument. Thank you. <laughs> extracurricular activities. Different from Chinese education system, in Canadian education, students are encouraged to participate in clubs to express their interests and increase their personal skill sets. And there are many different kinds of forms of extracurricular activities in our school, like Model United Nations and Maple Leaf Let's Talk Club, and etc. These activities are strongly de developed our social experience, teamwork spirit, and leadership. And um, it helps us become more comprehensive and, and able to deal with many variety of situations when we step into our society. And the impeccable and flexible personality is easier to adapt with society. And the personality will only be formed when you're particip participating in the extracurricular activities. Here is an example for the result of no extracurricular activity. And according to the report from Chinese Academy of Social Sciences in 2011, there were six million undergraduate students in China, and 5,700,000 of them were unemployed, which means the unemployment rate was around 10%, which means every 10 students, one cannot get a single job. They all have great scores, they all are the university students, but why does no company want them? Because they have, high, uh, they have high scores but low abilities. In Canadian high schools, students are having more time to do what they like rather than doing test papers. And uh, cultivating their interests is not only for great childhood, but also for the awareness of what, what ability they need and what kind of person they want to be. Thank you. Let's just, uh, I'm very happy to see you again. <laughs> uh, 
firstly, uh, our uh, native side talked something about the pressure. Uh, firstly, I would like to mention the pressure is not the problem for our education system because, you know, the population of China is far more uh, larger than, than in Canada. And secondly, uh, they said something about the free time. So what I want to ask you a question. What is the main job for students? Obviously, gain knowledge, right? So if they have more free time, it means that they spend less time on studying. Uh, and uh, however, on contrast, uh, Chinese students spend a lot of time on studying. And uh, you know, just like I said before, this is the main job for students. And, uh, uh, and the uh, study, and the study is that uh, Kenyan students just uh, uh, learn so many things, for example, sociology and uh, something like that, which is useless. <laughs> why, why they learn this? They just, they just want to improve their grades. They just want to improve their mark and help them to get into university. And this is the main, this is the main point. You know? So uh, basically, I, I think what the, what the negative side uh, said is totally wrong. Yes, thank you. So I totally don't agree with you. Um, each activity matches with a specific academic area. Like for students who are going, who are going to take engineering and, and in the engineering faculty in the future, participating in such activity will help them to more concentrate on their uh, studying in a limited amount of time and thereby promote their studying efficiency. If young students can only study in school, this, uh, this definitely will lose their interest on studies. If they are no interested anymore, why come to school? And the, uh, the school things are whole wa they are wasting your time. So don't come to school. Maybe you want to forget. Yeah, hello everyone. Our last and final point for this evening is that the Chinese education system focuses more on basics, my science and the long risk skills. To begin with, the Chinese education system focuses on educating students in the most basic yet still crucial aspect of education. Urgently, math, science, and language skills are the most important factors in every education system. By focusing on these basic skills, Chinese students are able to experience mastery of these subjects, which sets them up or later for taking on and studying a variety of additional subjects in comparison. <laughs> the Canadian education system focuses on a variety of subjects, including various of arts, music, and home economic courses, which <laughs> well fine. Maybe pro prove to be a little use to the students for their future. But this creates students who are mediocre at a variety of subjects, rather than students who excel in the basics, or oh, like in the Chinese education system. That also explains why the Chinese team won more than 18 championships in the Olympic Mice um, International Competition. And the, guess what the Canadian students get? Yes. Look here, the big zero, right, big zero. Finally, while focusing on the basics, my sense and language, the Chinese education system encourages independent work and competition, rather than wasting time on group projects and peer support groups. As a result, <laughs> the skills that Chinese students learn, they do so on their own. And when they graduate from a Chinese high school, they are well prepared to survive with their own dependent knowledge, independent knowledge in the real world. Conversely, unfortunately, Canadian students spend far too much time working in partners or groups, when in reality, when they graduate high school and enter the workforce or university, they will be expected to survive on their own. How will they possibly adapt? Oh, right, they won't. <laughs> Looking at the above point, I ask you to consider what is more important, an educational system designed to teach students deep knowledge about the most important subjects in both school and life. Or an education system designed to teach on surface level knowledge about a variety of unimportant subjects. That's all. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you all. So for the what, what's the argument, or what they have already, uh, already said, we believe the opposite is true. They have said that Canadian education system is going for too many directions. Well, let us consider the high school education. In China, in China, for example, in grade 10, we are taking all of the things all together, including all the subjects we have, plus um, very difficult politics, history, geography, and many other things. But when we get into our higher education, we can choose if we take physics or not, and we can have more choice. Let us think in this way. If a student is going to take art in the university, do they really have to learn the maths that hard? But what actually happened in China, the, um, take the math as an example, it is much harder than what we are learning here. But uh, we are more focused on what the student will learn in the future. For those students who are taking engineering, we have the pre-calculus and calculus. And for those who are taking art, we have the art class to support them. But what's, look at the Chinese activities. The Chinese classes are having much more focus on the academic things, and the teachers even prohibit students to take the extracurricular activities. And for the in group work and independence part, we still have the task we have to do our own. We separate the desk, we sit in our own row, and we do the things by ourselves. We do not cheat, and we <laughs> consider cheat as a very severe um, action. But what happened in Chinese education? The only very um, serious um, test is the, um, at the last of the term. And they even cheat at that term, uh, at that test. And for the Gao Kao, um, there is only once and one chance. And if they fail or not feeling well that day, do not in a good <coughs> condition, they are done. And they, this is a very, um, it, it is a tragedy for them. And for them, um, so the Canadian students, can develop both their group work through communication and PPT and other um, literature circle, and they can only uh, also have the independence, which they have to achieve during the test. So I believe that Kenyan education is much better than the Chinese one. Thank you. many weak points for me to attack. First, <laughs> uh, you say the Chinese high school history and politics is so hard. I don't think so. That means maybe I'm better than you. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, you know, why we need to study the history and politics? That's because China has a more complex nation, you know, situation than, can, than Canada. If we don't learn the history, we don't learn the politics, how can we like avoid doing the wrong thing, same wrong thing as our ancestors. It's for our own good. It's to it's for developing our own country. We have to do some hard working to achieve that. And also, you say like um, uh, you, the art students focus on art, or the uh, engineering students focus on math. I don't agree with that. You are only eighteen or seventeen now. How can you um, possibly know what you want to be in the future? How many of you can? 100% sure what you want to do in the future. But if you take all the subjects, you will have a much wider range for your um, like future subject uh, major like choice. It's, it's a really good thing for you. Like if you want to work hard now, and you will get a much better future than the Canadian students who don't want to work hard in the teenagers. And also, um, you say, uh, I think you say we, our Gaokao is really bad, and if I don't feel good on Gaokao, I will feel all of my life. But I don't agree with it either. Like, uh, if you are a Canadian student and you don't study all the time, and finally, certainly, you will not have the university to go to. But in China, in China, if you like uh, finally realize you need to study hard one month before the Gao Kao, you still have the chance to go to a really good op uh, really good uh, university. So I think it's a second chance for everyone. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to use this microphone, I always work. Uh, first, I'm going to say, uh, students' job, a main job of students, 
is to grow healthily as a human being, not study knowledge. Study is important, but not as important as grow as growing. And I want to ask you, what is study? Study is the test, is numbers, or exams. No, study is studying skills. Skills is the most important thing, and that's what uh, what that's what Canadian schools do. And uh, you say uh, you just say um, Canadian uh, Chinese stu uh, Chinese students when they grow up, when they are in society, uh, they will become all around person, and they won't decide the, what they were, what they are going to do before they came into society. But uh, please tell me, put a uh, uh, put a high school textbook and use it to be a politics. And as for the evaluation system, Canadian, Canadian students get scores from every exam, test, quizzes, and projects they do. Uh, in other words, Canadian assessment provides students with many opportunities to success, and in many different ways. In this case, students learn the failure is not the end of the world. This will learn, uh, uh, they will learn not to fear failure, but use it as a learning tool. Failure teaches us far more lessons than success do. Also, this is more human based. If a student during Gao Kao uh, has some personal affairs that affects his or her health, emotion, or status, which results in a bad academic performance, he or she may have to do it next year or lose chance forever. However, students can take else SAT tests for many times, and if they did not get do well in one quiz, they can catch up by working hard on the other. This will make them more passionate with studying. This reduces child students pressure. In China, three years pressure for one day. Everything is determined by test results on one day, and students may get overstressed. While Canadian courses distribute the pressure even in the longer term and a proper amount. Students in China must get their rank at school. Teachers and parents comparison with them uh, with other kids. And the various competition all contribute to the great stress in China courses. It is more fair or humane to, be, to evaluate a student through a long-term observation, like Canadian school does. Um, and of course, every student's grades shouldn't be published to other, especially for other parents. Thank you. So first of all, thank you for your rebuttal. Because I really do think it's a point. I don't get your, what your point is. But if you say like that, I find something that I can fight back. So the first you talk, the student's first job is for living. I mean, that's for the human being's job. The student, it's a, it's students means the person who study. It's not just the, the student's meaning. I, I don't want to discuss with this uh, word term. So, and second, you talk about, uh, uh, you, you ask, ask a question, like, could the Chinese people use her, uh, his high school history or politics book to become police? So I will ask you a question. So could you use a Canadian textbook to find a job? No, you can't. <laughs> I mean, if you open your physics or some other kind of book, you will find a bunch of, hundreds of problems as the answer sheet. I drew it, I count it. In the whole chapter, there are more than 30 wrong in the, the textbook. And also, <laughs> this was, I, I think this could be uh, a disadvantage of the Canadian educational system that you cannot, even cannot, do with the wrong thing inside your textbook. And you, I even don't know how to rebuttal your point because your point is, is pointless. You, you're not giving or a point. It's, it your, your should be a point, but you talk it like an argument, like a rebuttal. Thanks. Uh, okay, hello. Uh, if you don't know how to rebuttal my point, um, I'm worried about your understanding. Okay, <laughs> let, just, let me say, just students, what is students? It's a human who are studying, which means he is a human. He or she is a kid, is a teenager, is a human. So first of all, he or she should grow healthily as a human being. And the second is study or other things. And the study is not a knowledge like Chinese education system does, but it's teaching skills. And, and I want to say, uh, the respect uh, of Chinese students to their teachers. Uh, Chinese students pretend that they're respectful to their teachers when they are in front of their teachers. But do you know, 
uh, they hate their teachers because their teachers regarded they regarded them as members, as the grades, as marks. How do you know? I want to ask your serious Chinese teacher. How do you know your students? Your Chinese students are not next Newton, next Einstein. So, uh, so the marks can define everything for uh, for the students. Uh, and the Chinese and the Chinese parents. A Chinese parents maybe will fight with kids about uh, a a bad grades their t their kids have uh, on on one test, but they will compare them to other kids. Like look at Alice in the class B. Uh, look at look at you. Look at you getting the test. And maybe the students will get less and less confident in study. And maybe they will lose the interest in study. And finally, what uh, you said, uh, Chinese students get very, very good grades in Olympic uh, math contest. But have you ever think about Nobel the Nobel Prize? Uh, what Chinese uh, what Chinese get on the Nobel Prize? But Canadian does uh, Canadian does very well in Nobel Prize, uh, at least well than Chinese. And I want to say, yeah, I want to say, uh, high school and middle school are the term that students or a teenager should grow, should grow, their, uh, should grow their skills. And university is the most important part, most important period for a student to study, to find a job. Okay, thank you. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Do you think you, when you graduate from the university or your high school, you can be a Nobel Prize? That's ridiculous. It's not about the education, it's about the research program. So, and I think rather than um, bringing out your own third point, you just do a lot of rebuttals for our point. So also thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, I think your points are so weak that I don't want to attempt anymore. So instead of that, I will impress you again with our fabulous closing statement. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. We think Chinese education system is better because it generates better students. First of all, uh, it gave us it gives us a thorough curriculum so that we can earn our world famous reputation about mastering the basic skills like math and science. Secondly, the solid foundations directly give us a much wider range when we choose our major subject, concentration in our post-secondary education. And also, the top assignments we receive in school and finish independently actually help us to be well prepared before entering the labor force by forcing us master mastering the skills without the help of anyone else. Also, due to the good management and discipline of this system, students and parents show more respect to their teacher, who are the most essential part of education. What's more, it is also undeniable that, because of less peer pressure and bullying, and a stronger commitment to learning, students are able to concentrate on, concentrate on schooling and are not sidetracked by alcohol and drug abuse, like many students in Canada. Finally, the rigid academic standards and the commitment to discipline create students who are psychologically stronger and will not feel victim to a heightened sense of self-worth and a lack of responsibility for their own failures. Such is the case with students who are coddled in the Canadian education system. At last, I want all of you to close your eyes and imagine this picture. There are two houses. One of them has a really stable and deep base. Instead of house, it's full of knowledge and safety. And the inhabitants are polite, hardworking, and independent. But by comparison, the other one has a really weak base, which seems to collapse under a breeze or a drizzle. Instead of house, there are drugs and alcohol, and the inhabitants deal with ignorance, bullying, discrimination, and laziness. Which one would you want your child to live in? This is the life-changing count. If you decide on the first one, that means you think the Chinese education system is better than Canadian education system. 
Well, the negative side is doing their final closing statement. I urge you to keep this picture in your mind. Of course, listen to the rationale in the end. I think you all know which team has won this debate. Without considering your nationality and your own bears, why don't you just admit that Chinese education system is far superior? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers, administrators, guests, and judges. So the opposite side have, has given us the picture about what two kind of education is like. But I want to mention that the picture is existing in all parts of the world. All school, no matter what, in Canada, in India, in any other school, there are bullying, there are alcohol. We cannot avoid these things to happen. What we can do is to develop a better system instead of letting them to focus simply on tests. Can these students enjoy a better course design and evaluation system which enable them to show their versatility and ability in many different skill sets, rather than simply showing their ability to memorize information time and time again? Furthermore, shorter working hours, shorter working hours for students can make them work more productively and efficiently. And various extracurricular activities ensure that students are not only healthy and having fun, but are well-rounded individuals. Finally, better infrastructure and education quality all contribute to the fact that the Canadian system is a developed, more than effective and practical one. Though the Chinese Senate had, had attempted to refute our governments, we have discredited every single claim they have made. They repeatedly saying that our points are weak, but they say nothing about why our points are made weak. The Chinese education system trains students as if they were members in one school over and over again. This training is for testing. While the Canadian system educates students on how to be skillful, flexible human beings in the ever-changing world. Comparing to the still a skill and interest-oriented practical education system, the Chinese system is rigid, impractical, boring, out of date, and burdensome. To conclude, Canadian education gives students the skills to be competitive and successful in the modern world. It is therefore superior to the Chinese system. Your presence in the Central Canadian program and in the Canadian University Fair today exactly proves your preference on the Canadian education system. Thank you all for listening and it's a very big pleasure to debate with you this evening. Thank you all. Okay, I guess we'll give the judges a few minutes to uh, decide. I, was, uh, I, I do have to get a, a point in here about the handlers as well. I mean, your planners were, had you prepared very well for this. I mean, the format um, in particular, I was very impressed with another skill, the extemporaneous speaking, especially the rebuffers, when you're getting up there and picking points out without referring to notes a lot. That requires a, a, a particular skill that came out, especially on this side, called critical thinking. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Because uh, critical thinking is, uh, is one of the, what was one of the skills that uh, came out from the arg uh, on the argument on the uh, Canadian side. But um, absolutely wonderful job for both sides. I, like, as a new teacher here, I was very impressed with uh, with the skills and with uh, with your uh, poise up there. And I really don't have a whole lot more to say other than what the other judges said, but uh, I think uh, you're gonna be very impressed or very surprised with the outcome for sure. All I can say and tell you is wow. Okay, you guys did such a good job. Um, I've experienced both the Asian style of education and the Canadian style of education, and I have to say that you guys can definitely compete with your Canadian counterparts when you go to university, for sure. Um, I just want to say that we were super impressed. As you can tell, we were outside for a long time <laughs> trying to decide who um, was, is basically the winner of tonight, and it was such a difficult process. We were. We weren't arguing with each other, but we had points against each other with, about your teams. And so, the verdict is, can I get a table drum roll? Okay, so, 
when I was listening to your debate, I ranked each and every one of you based on your points, your rebuttals, you know. Um, and so it, the ranking was very, very close. For Team China, it was a point of 35. For Team Canada, it was a point of 36. And so congratulations. Team Canada, you are the winner of this debate.